Elden Ring damage is divided into two main categories, physical and elemental damage. Physical damage is further subdivided into standard, strike, slash, and pierce damage, while elemental damage is categorized into magic, holy, fire, and lightning. The most important factor to consider when using any type of damage is the target we are going to face. It doesn't matter if we have the most broken fire, magic, or lightning build. If our target is highly resistant to the element we are using, our damage output will not be significant. The same principle applies to physical damage, though its impact on performance is generally less severe. In this video, I'll show you the best build for each type of elemental damage and one build that addresses physical damage as a whole. But before, thanks to all these amazing people that comment in every video and are not afraid to succeed. Let's begin with everyone's favorite. This elemental damage is definitely not the best in the late scenarios of the base game, but in the DLC it's actually very useful and against certain enemies can be completely broken. It is actually one of the best damage types to destroy the final boss in Shadow of the Earth Tree. However, what I like the most of all the damage is that it scales with fate, allowing you to use the best incantations of the game with the right setup. For this build, I chose a few weapons I could easily trust my life to. With this one, we can use the Euphoria on plus 10 or the Black Steel Twin Blade on plus 25 with the Royal Knight's Resolve Ash of War on the Sacred Affinity. Or we can also use the Golden Order Greatsword on plus 10. This one is a very strong holy damage weapon, but is very underrated because in the base game is not pretty good. With this one, we are going to use the Sword of Darkness because the Darkness skill will increase the holy damage that we deal by 20%. What it actually does is that it reduces the holy damage negation of your enemies by 20%, therefore you will be dealing 20% more holy damage. We are going to use the Madding Hand that will increase our damage by 7.5% with Ditch Madness proc, and we are going to use any seal we have available to cast our main boss. We are going to be rocking 3 pieces of the Rakshasa armor set that will increase our damage by a total of 6%, and we will combine it with the Black Dumpling for a 10% damage boost with Ditch Madness proc. The best talismans we can use for this build are the H1's Exultation, the Sacred Scorpion Charm, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman, and the Axe Talisman. And in case we want to use the Euphoria Vortex or the Established Order skills, we have to replace the Axe Talisman for the Shard of Alexander, but that will be the only change I will do. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Soaking Crack Tear and the Holy Shrouding Crack Tear. And this weapon devours stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. Be aware that I am showing you the weapons that you can use with this build. It doesn't mean that you need to have equipped all the three weapons at the same time, because as you can see I have heavy load right now and because of this my rolls are going to be significantly slower. For that reason I recommend you to choose one of two of these weapons, that way you will that way you will be able to effectively use each one of them. And this is gonna be the same for the rest of the builds I'm going to show you today. To get the most out of our weapons and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on vigor, 20 on might, 40 on endurance, 18 on strength, 35 on dexterity and 99 on faith. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. We are going to use Blessing of the Earth Tree to counter the HP drain effect of the blood sucking crack tier, and we are going to use Midra's Flame of Frenzy to proc madness faster. But this one is not necessary, we can actually do that only spamming Hall of Shabriri. And to deal the max amount of damage possible in the DLC, be sure to have your Scatterjee Blessing on the level 20. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMO EXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMO EXP for sponsoring today's video. Everyone has the idea that magic damage is crazy and it can actually make the game a piece of cake. And they are right! The reason why magic damage is so good and why people love it is in first place because just a few enemies have an extremely high resistance to this type of damage, and because there are a lot of weapons and sorceries that can be highly benefited from a high intelligence character. In the same way, magic damage can be buffed in multiple ways thanks to all the different passive effects of the armor sets and staffs, making of this elemental power extremely useful. When it comes to this type of damage, you have a lot of possibilities, but this is what the best magic build looks like to me. In this case, we are going to use the Knight's Greysword on plus 25 with the Carrion Sovereignty Ash of War on the Magic Affinity, but we can also use the Dark Moon Greysword on plus 10 or the Moon Veil on plus 10, or we can also use two Staff of Loss on plus 25, and we need any seal we have available to cast our main boss. In this case, I recommend you to use the Spellblade set because it will increase the damage of your magic skills by a total of 8% if we wear the entire set. Be mindful that unlike the Rakshasa's armor set, this one is going to buff only the damage of the skills, while the Rakshasa's armor set will increase your overall damage by 8% if you wear the entire set. However, if you pay attention to the equip load, now we are on heavy load, but if we use the Spellblade set, we will be able to use all of these weapons without passing from medium load, which I find absolutely fantastic because you can have 3 weapons and 2 staffs allowing you to have the ultimate magic damage build. But remember that you can use any other armor set you want. The most effective talismans we can use for this build are the Shard of Alexander, the Magic Scorpion 
Charm de Godfrey Icon and the Relanas Cameo. This talisman setup will grant us the best performance possible for our weapons, but if we want to use our sorceries, then we will be using the Graven Mass Talisman and the Graven Skull Talisman. This way we will get the max damage possible from our sorceries. And if that's the case, it will be a lot better if we use the Rakshasa's armor set, cause as I previously mentioned, the Spellblade set will only boost the skills. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Soaking Crack Tier and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tier. And this build doesn't consume a lot of stamina, but it is always good to have a fast stamina recovery speed. That's why I recommend you to craft some Pickle Turtle next. This build is not gonna be broken as it is if we don't use 50 on Vigor, 30 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 16 on Strength, 18 on Dexterity, 83 on Intelligence, and 33 on Faith. Golden Vow, Hall of Shabriri, and Terra Magica are going to be our main buffs. And as the main sorcery of this build, I recommend you to use the Knight's Comet. But you can also experiment with multiple sorceries, cause as you can see, we have a lot of intelligence. Once again, to deal the max amount of damage possible to the hardest DLC bosses, be sure to have your Scattered Blessing on the level 20. This one is probably the hardest damage type to work with, cause its design is a little bit strange. To be able to deal a lot of damage with lightning incantations, we need high faith, and to deal a decent damage with lightning skills and ashes of war, you need high dexterity, which means that if you want to be strong with both incantations and weapons, you will need a high level dexterity and faith build, which in my opinion is pretty uncommon and somewhat weird. However, that doesn't mean we can't have a strong lightning build capable of destroying the toughest bosses of the game quickly. All we have to do is optimize our resources so we can obtain a fantastic setup like this. We are going to use two Graveless Stone Seals on plus 25 to stack the passive effect that increases the potential of the Dragon Cult incantations. We are going to be rocking the Bolt of Grand Axe on plus 10 and the Dead Knight's Twin Axes on plus 10 as well. And as a secondary weapon, we are going to rock the Flower Stone Gavel on plus 10, but we are going to use it mostly as a debuff, cause the Flower Dragon Bolt skill will reduce the lightning resistance of our targets. I really don't like to use this weapon too much cause I actually feel like the effect is not working properly right now, but eventually they might fix it and it's going to increase your lightning damage dramatically. For this build, we are going to use the Priestess Heart. This item will turn our character into a dragon. In dragon form, we can use it once more to increase the damage of the Dragon Cult incantations by 20%. The buff will last only 60 seconds, so if it expires, you will have to use it again. The main problem of using this item is that we are not going to be able to use any armor set, but we will gain a significant amount of additional damage. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Lightning Scorpion Charm, the Godfrey Icon, the Flux Canvas Talisman, and the Faithful Canvas Talisman. If we want to use the weapons instead of the incantations, we can actually use the Death Knight's armor set. It's going to increase the damage of the Blink Ball Twin Axe, and it's not going to affect the Ancient Lightning Spear, but it will provide you some defense. For the Bolt of Grand Sacks, we will replace the Faithful Canvas Talisman for the Shard of Alexander. And for the Death Knight Swing Axes, we are going to use the Millicent's Prosthesis and the Rodent Wings of Insignia. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Lightning Shrouding Crack Tear. This build consumes a decent amount of stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. And as I previously mentioned, we are going to use the Priestess Heart. To obtain the max performance of this build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 32 on Mind, 35 on Endurance, 20 on strength, 40 on dexterity, 80 on fade, and 15 on arcane. Golden Vow and Howl of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. Knight's Lightning Spear and Ancient Dragon's Lightning Strike are going to be our main source of damage. As you can see, I have my Scattered Blessing on the level 20, and if you want to deal the max amount of damage possible to the hardest DLC bosses, be sure to have it on the level 20 as well. I always like the pyromantic builds in Dark Souls series. Anyways, I never tried a fire-based build until I discovered its true potential in Elden Ring. Very similar to magic, this damage type can be heavily buffed by multiple means, unleashing its max performance pretty easily. The best part of fire damage is that there are a lot of enemies that are extremely weak to it, and the rest are just resistant to it, but not extremely resistant like Moog, making of fire damage one of your best options if you are looking for a fun and solid build. So fire damage is, from my perspective, the most useful across the four elemental damage types available, and this is the build I will use to conquer this game with. In this case, we are going to use the Fire Knight's Grey Sword on plus 25 with the Royal Knight's Resolve Ash War on the Flame Art Affinity. But we can also use the Blasphemous Blade on plus 10 or the Sword of Night and Flame on plus 10. We are going to use the Madding Hand cause it will increase our damage by 7.5% with each Madness proc. And we need any seal we have available to cast our main boss. We are going to be rocking 3 pieces of the Rakshasa's Armor set for a 6% damage boost and we will combine it with the Black Dumpling that will increase our damage by 10% with each Madness proc. And the cool part about the Black Dumpling is that the buff will last an entire minute. The best talent we can use for this build are the Aged One's Exultation, the Fire Scorpion Charm, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman, and the Axe Talisman. If we want to use the Blasphemous Blade, we are going to use the Talisman of the Dread and the Shard of Alexander. And if we want to use the Sword of Night and Flame, we 
would have to use the Stargazer Irlum, the Relanas Cameo, and the Shard of Alexander. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Soaking Crack Tear and the Flame Shrouding Crack Tear. And in this case, we will include a fantastic item that will allow us to increase our fire damage by 65%. The thing with the Hefty Oil Pot and the Oil Pots is that the fire damage buff we will be getting will only work with the next fire damage instance. This means that if we code our target on oil and then we deal a very small amount of fire damage, the buff will disappear instantly. For that reason, if we are going to use this item, we better have a very strong fire build. And let me tell you that what we have here is the strongest fire damage build you can find in Elden Ring. And this build devours stamina, so be sure to craft some pickle turtlenecks to boost your stamina regeneration speed. In order to obtain the max performance of our weapons and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on vigor, 22 on mind, 40 on endurance, 22 on strength, 18 on dexterity, 19 on intelligence, and 99 on faith. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be our main buffs. Once again, we are going to use the Blessing of the Earth Tree to counter the HP drain effect of the Blood Sucking Crack Tear. And to build madness quickly, we are going to use Midras Flamestead Flame. And as you can see, I have my Scattershy Blessing on the level 20. And if you want to deal the same amount of damage I am dealing to the hardest DLC bosses, be sure to have it on the level 20 as well. Last but not least for physical damage, the meta is quite clear. Pierce damage is the most broken of all. It is extremely powerful because it's capable to penetrate the heaviest armored enemies and is pretty effective against every type of enemy in general, while slash damage for instance loses performance against enemies with strong armor sets. In the same way, strike damage max performance is pretty limited by the small amount of enemies vulnerable to it, and standard damage, as its name clearly describes it, is pretty mid. Nonetheless, with only one build, we will be able to have every type of damage available to dominate Elden Ring on its entirety. For this one, we are going to use two cross Naginatas on plus 25 with the Seppuku Ash of War on the Occult Affinity. In the same way, we will use the Star Fist on plus 25 with the Crackblade Ash of War on the Occult Affinity as well, and two Scavenger Scorpse Swords on plus 25 with the Seppuku Ash of War on the Occult Affinity too. With the Naginatas, we have Cover Pierce Damage, with the Star Fist the Strike Damage, and with the Scavenger Scorpse Swords, we have the Slash Damage covered. And the reason why I am not covering a Standard Damage is because it is pretty mid, so, so it is better if you use any of these three types of damage than going for Standard. Once again, we are going to be rocking three pieces of the Rakshasa's armor set that will increase our damage by a total of 6%, and we will combine it with the White Mask for a 10% damage boost with each Bleed Proc. The most effective talismans we can use for this build are the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Rodding Wings or Insignia, and the Twin Blade Talisman. If we want to use the Star Fist, we are going to use the Axe Talisman because of the R2 of this weapon, and if we want to use the Scavengers, we will use the Cloth Talisman and the Graver's Black Wheel Armor of the Raptor's Black Feathers. This way, we will obtain the max performance of each one of these weapons. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. And with this build, we are going to be dealing only physical damage, that's why our best body buff is going to be Blood Boil Aromatic, but if you don't like crafting, feel free to use Flame Grand Me Strength. And as any other broken build of this channel, this one is going to devour stamina, so be sure to craft some Pickle Turtle Legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. To get the most out of our weapons and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on Vigor, 15 on Mind, 40 on Endurance, 16 on Strength, 36 on Dexterity, 25 on Faith, and 90 on Arcane. Golden Vow and Flame Grand Me Strength are going to be our main buffs. And be sure to have your Scattery Blessing on the level 20 to deal the max amount of damage possible to the hardest DLC bosses. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of these builds. If you enjoyed the video, I would strongly appreciate if you drop a like and subscribe to my channel for more Elden Ring videos. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I will see you in the next one.